Item 14, Stage 3 Drought Update. Ms. Steyer again. Hello. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Hagmark is in Spain this week, so I have the pleasure of giving the drought update this month. Um, start with uh, the drought status, the demand status, and the water supply status, um, and then review the water supply strategy, which we had a discussion on back in March, give you an update on drought funding and water conservation. This is uh, from the County of Santa Barbara's website. It's rainfall for the uh, water year starting September 1st, which is a different start date than our water year, which is October 1st. Um, but in all three places, up in the uh, Gibraltar Reservoir, Kachuma Reservoir, and in downtown Santa Barbara, we've had above normal rainfall. This is a chart showing Gibraltar Reservoir rainfall. And here in the last five years, we've had very dry um, weather conditions, well below average. This is our current water year. And this hatched mark is the rain event over the President's Day weekend when we received almost 10 inches of rainfall. And if we didn't have that one storm, uh, we'd still be below average rainfall. This is a chart of our Kachuma water storage. The green line is the storage during the last major drought period from 1986 to 1993 is what's plotted. Um, the black line is the current drought. And you can see we tracked pretty closely to what we did uh, last time, although this drought was more severe, it was drier, and it was longer. Um, so I think we did pretty well in this drought. Um, we also had more environmental requirements for flows uh, released from the dam. So um, I think we've done quite remarkable with uh, getting through this challenging period. This is when we had the February rain and the reservoir went up 50 feet in one month. So now we've basically rewound the clock back to where we were in 2014 uh, when we started to declare the drought condition. So the drought has improved, but it's far from over. This is the uh, US Drought Monitor of California. It's put together by NOAA. And I wanted to call your attention to this, the note at the bottom that says, the drought monitor focuses on broad scale conditions and local conditions may vary. So this is important even within our county, which we're now shown as a um, moderate level drought. Um, North County is in a very different situation than, than South County. So we are all still in an emergency drought condition. All of our neighboring water agencies still have water use restrictions in place. Our demand status, this is our running average uh, system demand. So in March, we had a 44% reduction from 2013 water use. Um, that's pretty remarkable. At the time, we had a 40% conservation target in place, um, which has since been changed to 30%. And uh, our cumulative savings is 37%. This is one of my favorite charts. So this is our total water production going back to the 1980s. Um, and this is where we were before the last drought. And then there was a dramatic decline in water use with a um, drought emergency declared. And then once the drought was over, our water demand slowly returned over about a five-year period, but they never went back to what they were in the 1980s. They hovered about 20% lower than what they were before. And now this is our current drought. This is what we've done over the last few years. Our community has really dramatically reduced their water use to the same point at the, as the low point in the last drought. It's remarkable. So Gibraltar Reservoir is currently uh, full. We've been diverting water since March up to our monthly maximum lim limits. We're trying to use as much Gibraltar water as we can before uh, um, the water quality changes. Typically over the summer, it begins to degrade. So we're trying to maximize our use now while the water quality is really good. 
Um, our hydroelectric plant has been online since March 2nd, and in fact, we just received our first uh, check from Edison. It was about $14,000 for the last month, uh, which is great news. And Kachuma is at about 50% of capacity. Um, we received a 40% allocation from the Bureau of uh, Reclamation for this water year. Um, not all the water in Kachuma is project water. It's very complicated accounting with state water and fish accounts, downstream water rights. And so after we've subtracted out all of those other accounts, the 40% was what was uh, remaining for the um, water supply this year. And we anticipate an allocation next year as well. Um, fish releases have resumed. Uh, National Marine Fisheries Service um, worked with uh, the Bureau of Reclamation to begin fish releases. Um, this was an issue last month. Because they had to use the Hilton Creek Emergency Backup System, it was going through our Bradbury Dam Outlet Works, which interrupted our state water deliveries temporarily. And CCWA has been working and has successfully now installed a bypass around the Outlet Works, so our state water deliveries have resumed. Uh, the emergency pumping barge uh, has been dismantled. It's not expected to be needed until the summer of 2019. So we have a plan in place uh, in the event that we do need it a couple years from now if drought conditions continue. Imported water, as I mentioned, our state water deliveries have resumed to Kachuma as of April 14th. Um, Central Coast Water Authority acted very swiftly to make that happen, so I'm grateful for their work. Um, our state water allocation has increased from 60% to 85%. Snowpack up north is 174% of normal. Um, which has allowed the Article 21 deliveries to continue. That's basically free water when San Luis is spilling, so um, that's expected to continue through June. Our metropolitan water, the last estimate that we received for what we'll get back from that storage exchange was about 1,450 acre feet out of the roughly 4,500 that we put in. Um, the numbers are still being reconciled, so we should get some news, I think, in the next month on what the final numbers are. Uh, this summer and fall, uh, we'll have to consider um, what we do with our Table A water that's in, in San Luis, that's remaining in San Luis. We currently have enough water to keep the pipe to Kachuma flowing full, and we would likely have water carried over to, in San Luis. If we leave it there, it's at risk of spilling again, given the conditions. The re San Luis Reservoir is full right now, and the likelihood of spill is greater next year than it has been in previous years of drought. So we're going to- Did we actually lose water on the San Luis deal? Yes, yes we did. We did. The city uh, moved 4,500 acre feet of water into metropolitan water district's name. Can we get half of that back or a third of that back? It's looking like about 1,400 okay. acre feet no, back. Okay, yeah. Correct. Um, so we'll be looking at whether we want to repay some of our water debt or we could leave it in San Luis, but then it's at risk of spill next year. So that's something we'll have to consider in the coming months. Our groundwater basins are currently resting. We've shut down all of our wells as we are using our Gibraltar water. And um, both basins had remaining yields. They were at about 30% of capacity. So we're resting them now. And if the drought continues, uh, we would have that supply available for later years. Desalination project, the major construction is complete. The startup and testing is underway. Uh, seawater has been circulating through the plant since February of 2017, and the media filter is maturing uh, as anticipated. It's almost complete. Um, on April 21st, the RO membranes uh, are being loaded, and then 
May 4th is the anticipated date to begin a acceptance testing. So what that is, is we pretty much have all of our approvals from uh, Division of Drinking Water. And if the water looks good, um, we could put it into the system, but it's usually a two week process. So mid-May is when water would likely be going into the system. So this project has been uh, completed in less than two years from when the original authorization was given for design and construction. Water supply strategy, so this is something we talked about last month. Uh, we plan for continued drought conditions uh, for a three-year outlook, and our current strategy is, has a conservation target of 30 percent. Uh, we've removed the lawn watering ban in our water use regulations, but we still encourage people to reduce their lawn watering uh, to save water. Uh, I think Mr. White had a question from earlier. Sorry I do about, about the, a, a previous slide, uh, and that is the, the groundwater banking opportunities. I didn't hear, I heard the AVEC comment, oh. but I didn't hear about. Madam Mayor, Councilmember White, um, thanks for bringing that up. We have a few options which we could work with CCWA, Central Coast Water Authority. Um, if we, if we, we, so we can either leave it in San Luis to carry it over and potentially it could spill. We could repay our water debt at AVEC or we could put it into potential groundwater banking opportunities. CCWA has identified, I think, three opportunities uh, Irvine Ranch Water District being one of them. Um, because we have water debt, it's going to be more cost effective to pay back our water debt rather than putting some of it into a groundwater bank. Um, you typically don't get all the water back when you, and there's some, a cost associated with putting into the groundwater bank. So uh, for the city, it would be, we'd be looking to pay back our water debt first, and then if we needed additional water next year, we would go back on the market again. Um, so I, I would recommend paying back the debt with AVEC if we have that opportunity. And then banking is something that, I mean, we're obviously getting the, not, we have many uh, one-time or short-term expenses that have and are occurring, as, and then we have the launch of the BSAL as sort of our, our big pieces. However, in, in the longer term, ground banking is something that we still could use to, uh, to fill that pipe, be our state water pipe. Is that right? That's correct. It would make our state water more reliable. It's, the idea is when there's excess water that you can't use in the system, it's, you park it in a groundwater bank somewhere, and then it's available for use later. Um, because we, I don't really see us having excess water until we pay off all of our debt. Um, but at that point, I, I could see a groundwater banking option being a, a good way to improve long-term reliability of the system. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay. So this is our current water supply strategy. We're currently in year six, there's 2017. And a, one of the biggest changes this year with the rainfall that we had was that Gibraltar is now full. So that's this blue bar, the light blue bar that was not previously available to us. Um, and here we have our desal plant coming online this spring. We'll continue to, do, to use uh, imported water and maximize our deliveries to Kachuma to maintain storage. Um, and we've now shut down our, our groundwater wells, which is the yellow bar. So this yellow bar represents what we had already used to date. And then now we'll be reserving the remaining yields of the groundwater basins uh, for use in 2019 if the drought continues. Any Kachuma allocations that we receive this year is basically contingency or backup supply, uh, and most likely we would carry it over to next year for meeting demands in next, next water year. I wanted to give you an update on a Kachuma contract as it relates to our water supplies over the next few years. 
um, the current contract for Kachuma water supplies is between the County of Santa Barbara and the Bureau of Reclamation. And then there are five member units, including the city that subcontract with the county. It's a water supply contract and the member units have borne the lion's share of the cost of the Kachuma project. Um, even though the county is the master contract holder. The contract expires in 2020. And so the County Board of Supervisors will be discussing on May 2nd uh, the contract renewal and staff will be requesting authorization to formally request a new contract. There's a clause in the existing contract that requires um, a formal letter requesting renewal within two years of the contract's expiration. So we had uh, at our water commission meeting on April 20th, we invited Tom Farum, the deputy public works director from the County of Santa Barbara to give a presentation on the contract renewal. And uh, water commission's recommendation um, in that meeting was that council request the following at the County Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, and it's really related to the process going forward. Um, the, that city staff be included in all discussions with the Bureau, opposed to having um, the Bureau and the County meet without the member units and having information relayed back to us. Um, they request that the process include meetings with the member unit officials so that it's clear when meetings would occur prior to going to the Board of Supervisors, and that the process include weighted voting by the member unit elected officials for decision making on the master contract. So the, the current process does not currently include uh, any of, um, input from the governing bodies of the uh, member units. So the, uh, the, there was not sufficient time for council action on this issue prior to May 2nd. Um, I'm giving an update and let it, staff plans to write a letter regarding the process and we'll continue to dis discuss with the county. Um, so this was an update on that issue. Will you be including the Water Commission's comments in that letter? Yes. Okay, thanks. Mr. White, did you have another question? Well, no, not a question, just a comment, but I can wait till after the, the okay. presentation, okay. All right, so uh, Prop 1 Water Desalination Grant Program, we talked about this in the previous item. It's, uh, the draft guidelines were released on April 3rd. It's up to $73 million available for construction projects, which is great news. Uh, the max project award would be $10 million. Um, the city's desalination project um, the 3125 acre foot per year that's constructed fulfills the goals and the priorities of the program to provide a drought supply. However, the guidelines um, were written such that there are eligibility concerns with the timing of our project. So uh, we are working on a comment letter requesting that the eligibility date go back to November of 2014 when Prop 1 was initially passed. And um, the comment period ends May 12th with final guidelines expected in early June. So this would be a big, this is a big deal to us and we hope that they'll change the language. And now I'll turn it over to our Madeline Ward, our water conservation supervisor. I think just before we uh, move on to the conservation, I'd like to comment on the, on the uh, contract. This is, this is a big deal. Uh, the, the county, this is very unusual in the West that uh, a county that is not a purveyor is the contractor with the Bureau of Reclamation. Uh, water purveyors contract with the Bureau of Reclamation. And, and so this is uh, a, a, an isolation. The, the purveyors are isolated from the provider uh, in this situation, and and in this and, and in this round in particular, the county has moved forward without uh, advice and consent from the purveyors. And there's been a, a coordinator hired. Uh, no 
no input, no, just no engagement at all. And um, it's the, the, the way it's proposed to go is basically uh, shoving us aside, and us being the Carpinteria, Montecito, Santa Barbara, Goleta uh, purveyors. So it's, it really is important that uh, we gain some kind of foothold here, uh, again, we collectively, and, uh, and hopefully can get, get a place at the table both to uh, both participate in the discussions and have a, uh, have a say in, in, uh, in what's decided. Um, so uh, the letter is, is one step, and I think that uh, lobbying with our supervisors is, a, is another one where I think that we can... Uh, make a difference. I'm hoping that we can make a difference. Um, what we've seen, for example, is uh, the weighted voting issue is one where we see it in some places and we don't see it in others. Obviously, there's, there, the, there's on one extreme, there's uh, at CCWA, uh, at COMB, uh, and at, at uh, Consumer Conservation and Release Board. The, the larger water users have more say than the small ones. At SBCAG, everybody gets the Santa Barbara and the, is, has the same vote as a, a very small and like Guadalupe. So it's, there's a fairness issue here, important fairness issue, and uh, I think it's one where I think that the city should uh, weigh in with our supervisors to gain uh, some of the traction that's proposed here in this letter. And I certainly am game to participate in that. Madam Mayor, members of the council, my name is Madeline Ward. I'm the water conservation supervisor, and I'm going to share a few water conservation updates with you. So every year, the city sponsors a special award at the Santa Barbara County Science Fair, along with the county water agency and the other water providers. And this is to award a project or mo multiple projects that address water scarcity, water resource management, or water conservation. This year's winner was Nev Greenwald of La Colina Junior High, and she had a project in which she measured the rate of evaporation on various hard surfaces to find the optimal uh, rain collection and retention systems. We also had two runners up. We had Emily Doreen, also of La Colina Junior High, who had a project in which she created a water sill to evaporate and purify salt water. And Noah Wetzel of Goleta Valley Junior High had a project in which he tested various soil types to see which retained the most water and thus could lead to reduced irrigation. So congratulations to our local budding water scientists. I also wanted to remind everyone about the connection between power outages and sprinkler timers. Edison has been doing work around the city last week, and I believe this week will continue some more work, and some customers may experience power outages. I know I did at my house. So one little unknown fact is that these sprinkler timers, although they are connected to your power outlet, behind that panel is a D battery that remembers all of your programs if your power does go out. What we commonly find is that the D battery is either missing or it may be dead. So the programs will be erased and it will go on a default program that will water your landscape every day, every start time, every program for 10 minutes at midnight. This will often double or triple water bills. So just like with your smoke alarms, it's a good idea when you're checking your smoke alarms to make sure that you either have a battery and that it's a still uh, a active battery and replace it if it's dead. And then if you do experience a power outage, make sure you check your timer and make sure your programs are still there and that it's not on default watering. We also have some upcoming classes. We have Gray Water 101 on Tuesday, May 2nd, and Rainwater Harvesting on Thursday, May 11th. Both of these classes are from 7 to 8.30 p.m., and they take place at the Mackenzie Park Adult Building. They are taught by Sweetwater Collaborative and sponsored in part by the city. And more information on those classes can be found at our website. And we're here for any questions. Thank you. Why don't we go to Mr. Walker, and then we'll bring it all back to council. So come on up. Good afternoon again, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. A quick point in history. When the mission 
tunnel bore was punched through, I think, in 1910, that allowed for development of the upper Riviera area, area excuse me, and uh, Gibraltar Dam itself was not completed until 1920. They had a, they pulled off from construction during World War One. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, there's been a long, long history of water development in this area and that whole thing with the pump zone versus the non-pump zone. It's, it's a history taking place right now again. Okay, the, the one good thing about the desal plant, and it's like my house, I have a earthquake insurance seismic rider on it, I pay for it, and it gives you an assuredness of survivability to some degree. The same thing for that desal plant. I hear it a lot, oh, it's all this money being pumped into it, but you know, who was it? Alan Greenspan said, you know, we can guarantee you dollars, but we can't guarantee you the purchase price. And what you're seeing today was 70 million back in 1990 would be approximately 20 million of the 35 expended. So you got to look at the inflation value of what your buyers, excuse me, your dollars bought then and what they buy now. But from the top down of the state water project, the Keystone, Capstone, Cornerstone, Oroville Dam and what's going on up there, there's a bit of unknowns involved. The delta can be seismically compromised with the levees. Uh, again, the San Andreas Rift Zone cuts across the mid-state area around Parkfield, and that's where our California Aqueduct and the Coastal Branch takes off from it. So then you could have a problem with the Tecolote Tunnel being seismically compromised, and or even Lake Kachuma, the right abutment. That's where the San Ynez Fault right, runs right underneath it. So, you know, that desal plant, in my book, is great, great insurance. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's to the council. I'll just um, mention, you mentioned it, Ms. Dyer mentioned it earlier that uh, Mr. Casey and I had an opportunity to speak with State Senator Hannabeth Jackson on Friday on a number of things, and, and this was a big topic of conversation. I know our water staff and her staff have been going back and forth for several weeks now and she's um i want to commend her leadership and work on this to she was under the impression that the draft guidelines would be all ready and, and great and and worked with dwr quite a bit in um, making sure our facility could qualify and so hopefully we'll get that cleared up uh, but she has been uh, very um, proactively forthright on this so uh, i want to thank her for that um on the other issue mr white i would suggest assuming the item at the county is in the morning and not during council session that if you could attend and speak uh, at the hearing would probably be a good idea just at least in a concept of having the water purveyors be play a role um, you are our water liaison basically so that would that was why i was and you mentioned it so well, um, that would be my suggestion uh, so mr hart yeah, I have a sort of a tangential issue, but I think it's um, important to bring it up. There's been a lot of discussion about um, State Street and economic vitality on the street, and I've heard from a lot of the property owners and the businesses on the street that they think that they need to wash the sidewalks more aggressively, wash power wash the buildings as part of an effort to um, clean things in addition to all a number of other strategies to address economic vitality, and that, you know, our policies and approach to the drought, while critical at the time, have an unintended consequence in regards to that issue. And so I think I'd just like to put that on the table, have staff think about it, um, have council think about it. I don't think it's anything that has to be resolved the next month, but it's certainly something we should begin to be, give some attention to because I think there's going to be an increasing interest in um, in doing some cleaning on State Street, and it's going to take some water. And in the context of um, this, the actual supply for the city, this is one of those facts versus perception problems. You know, the amount of water we're talking about is insignificant, but the, um, the optics of it are, are challenging, perhaps. So I just want to put that on the plate. Okay. Could we hear from Mr. Casey on that? I think it's a good idea. Mr. Casey? Completely agree. Uh, already initiating conversations about that. Uh, there's also a health and safety issue about power washing the sidewalks that I think can, can fit in here as well. So agree and we're going to follow up on that okay any other comments okay we don't need a motion on this so thank you very much thank you
May it rain and it doesn't really rain in May, but we'll see. You never know. Could happen. It rained on our couture Yes, tour. I actually, I want to thank uh, Ms. Steyer. We, so U.S. Conference of Mayors had a, as I think was mentioned last week, this Water Policy Council meeting, and Ms. Steyer had a great, gave a great tour on Lake Achuma, and we got soaked, and uh, it rained. It was very beautiful at the beginning. Yeah, I'm glad we took arranging rain, I think. Right? Yes, I'm glad we took the group photo before we got on the boat, not at the end of the trip, because yeah. that would not have been nice, but... But thank you for all your work making that happen. Thank you. Okay.